Hi, this is Daryl Thorpe with Produce Like a Pro. I'm going to show you some techniques to help smooth out some harshness in vocals. And at the same application, most of these tips and tricks you can apply to other sources, guitars, pianos, acoustic guitars I've had sometimes. So it's, oh, cymbals is a good one. It really is in the same kind of frequency range. At the time that I did this mix for this particular artist, uh, I didn't have Soothe, or I'm not sure if Soothe was out. Uh, my main go-to was FabFilter Multiband. That being said, uh, there's several plugins out there that do multiband compression. Uh, Waves makes one or two, I believe. I know McDSP makes their AEA 4000 and 6000, which is a four band and a six band. UAD has the precision multiband limiter. There's several options out there for everybody, and I'm sure that in your plugins folder, you probably own some multiband compressor in order to apply this trick to your harsh tracks, whatever source they may be. It's such a fine line between trying to make something feel aggressive, but not aggressive enough to where the listener wants to be engaged into the song. I don't want people, you know, eyeballs to be kind of like twinging and they're turning their head because it hurts so much. Um, man, that's a common, common thing that I find when mixing other people's recordings and it also is it happens with me a lot usually it's just it's mic for microphone choice sometimes it can be a combination of microphone choice and or preamp choice with a singer but i completely understand with most people's budgetary they only have a mic to record with and fortunately for us there's a lot of plugins out there that will help you cause it in the mixing stage as far as taming down harshness. Quite frankly, I would just go to the mic locker and grab a few mics that I thought would help uh, tame down a singer's tonality that's that's a bit brittle or brutal sounding. And that was the, the great thing about working at Ocean Way for a while. The mic locker was just insanity about trying to get a, you could very easily get a good vocal sound because of the microphone choice you had. But in this case, so this is a singer that I've been working with over the past about five or six years. She's got a great, beautiful, powerful voice. Uh, but I think in this case, it's just not the quite the right, there could have been a little bit better choice of a microphone to help smooth that out. Might have been the only option at the time of recording. I really don't know. But in my case, it's not my job to worry about that. It's my job to kind of make what is given to me sound even better and captivating especially with the whole track so here we go i'm, I'm just going to play this is the chorus uh just a few bars of the chorus qui me brûle mon flamme cette fois on se dit bye révérence infâme rêve brutal et bye i mean i love her voice she's such a great singer she's got a really powerful voice too but i I hope you can hear it's it is a little grating it's a little like it's not pleasant and it her vocal tone should be this most luxurious thing that's sitting in the center of the mix so we're going to help get it there first things first multiband pro fab filter multiband kind of help that out which it's already helping Pretty much the stock settings in the uh, the Pro MB. All I'm doing is grabbing a frequency band point somewhere around 2800, 3K, and grabbing in there. And I'm looking around for. I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit. I'm just looking for those some of these higher higher peaks and frequencies right there are the ones that I know visually are the problem childs, and so I'm going to control. I usually leave the attack and release as is and the range as is and adjust the threshold to how much I want the multiband to work. And in that case, it's already helping out. The vocal sounded a little bit, like it had a little bit of a low mid rumble. So I put in a Q2 there and I did a little dip in the 200 hertz range to kind of... I'm just going to listen to that real quick. Yeah. It's got a little bit of a and that helps it open up the vocal sound to open up with more clarity. And then last but 
to go back to the top of the chain, I'm just doing a typical high pass, 90 hertz. So there's no low end rumble. And I don't know, I could have done it with the, the Q2. I'm not really sure why I did it. I don't know if you, if you've ever had the pleasure of, it's it's pretty interesting when you work on French music that the the S's are extremely important in the dialogue of what is being said. What I'm trying to do here is just grab some of these S's. I, I noticed as far as like the, the uh, range of, the frequency range where it's gonna DS, I've noticed with the Fab Filter, I like to make it pretty broad, like between 3K, oh, that's actually 4K, all the way up to 14K to grab any S's. That's doing a great job. So I'm gonna crank the vocal up. So that's already helping a lot with the DSing, controlling some of those really harsh sibilants, but also at the same token, taking out some of that mid-range bite that's in her voice uh, and then making it a lot smoother. And mind you, this is bone dry. So the other thing is the, I'm just gonna add uh, my 1073 into the chain. Added a little bit of 12 and a half to brighten her up, but I'm also taking out what is that, 2 dB at 3.2K? That's the same frequency where I'm hearing the harshness at, so. And then every little step that I'm doing now is having it, is, is making the vocal feel a lot smoother. I'm just gonna play it back without the EQ. And then I'm hearing it, so here's with. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of compression in there. So here's my 1176. I'm a, I'm a big uh, compress first, then EQ kind of guy. I know a lot of people do it. Some people do it the other way. And then here's a perfect example. Revision A, Blue Stripe, 1176, the tonality of it, the character of it, is helping my cause. It's making the vocal just feel so much richer, a lot thicker, and it's really pushing the harshness down in the frequency spectrum at all. So it's just the vocal's just feeling bigger and warmer. Each little step I do, and it kind of feels like in a weird way, I, I never realized I did this before, but I just do these minute little steps every time to kind of achieve an end result. And then I did, I added another compressor when I was mixing this, I remember, because I was just feeling like it wasn't, the vocal wasn't sitting quite in the spot of a mix, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it. Qui me brûle mon flamme, cette fois on se dit pas. When you solo it up like this, it doesn't really need it, but when you were in the track, it's a different thing. Then last but not least, my last, trick. I learned a long time ago about parallel compression, especially on a lead vocal, it can be a, a really amazing trick. So uh, let me just play once more without the parallel. Now I'm going to play with the parallel. So the parallel is the uh, good old UAD Imperial Labs Fatso. Pretty much just the stock settings going on there, nothing too crazy. I usually just leave the input and the output kind of where it when it normally comes up and I just add it in to taste. And I know my fader's at zero here, but I am trimming down the, the, the output 6 dB. Now, I do have, because of the harshness, I put a mother multiband, same thing in the realm of 2600, post the fatso. Um, parallel compression to me is a big, big part of how to control harshness and make something feel even bigger. Um, but it's it can be a very compressed 
sound. So if it's something you're looking for, then great. But uh, in this case, since the artist here, she's, it's very pop track, so I really wanted the vocal to be just sitting right in the center of the mix. Qui me brûle et m'enflamme Cette fois on se dit bye Révérence infâme Révé brutal Et bye Une dernière So here's without. Qui me brûle et m'enflamme Cette fois on se dit bye Révérence infâme And then here's with. Qui me brûle et m'enflamme Cette fois on se dit bye Révérence infâme Révé brutal I'm kind of curious, what happens when I get rid of multiband, pro and B, and go soothe? So let me put soothe on. And I'm not even going to listen to it first. I'm just going to go resolution ultra and leave it stock. Qui me brûle et m'enflamme Cette fois on se dit bye Révérence infâme Révé brutal Et bye Une dernière fois bye Loin de ton regard Sur le maquette d'un And man, soothe wins <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I owned Soothe when I mixed this track a couple years ago. So now I would just go right to Soothe. But pretty interesting example. So here's uh, the Pro and B in the chain, like I said before. Qui me brûle et m'enflamme Cette fois on se dit bye Révérence infâme And then here's Soothe. Qui me brûle et m'enflamme Cette fois on se dit bye Révérence infâme Révé brutal Man, soothe. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. She's every time. So that's how I treat a kind of a harsh vocal. But at the same token, man, I, like I said a minute ago, I really, really, the, the, the same practices and techniques I treat with a vocal, I also apply in other applications for whatever it may be, especially harsh sounding electric guitars or harsh sounding acoustic guitar. There's also all sorts of applications where I've found things extremely brittle and harsh and I've needed to thicken them up with plugins to, in order to get them to have some more life and not be that pointy. Mm -hmm.